my name is Kim Matthews. I am the support programs coordinator and a therapist at the Cancer Wellness Center. And I'm excited to introduce you to our Cancer Wellness Center labyrinth. So why do we have a labyrinth at the Cancer Wellness Center? We decided it would be a nice addition to our wellness programming. You might know that we offer lots of different programs for stress reduction, relaxation, like yoga, Tai Chi, guided imagery, um, just a class called stress reduction, and a labyrinth is a form of a walking meditation. So it's something that people can use when they just wanna to come to the center and just use the labyrinth and relax, or before or after counseling or a support group or a program. It is always open. It's at the back of our property and in a grassy area behind the parking lot. And it will be part, hopefully soon, of a larger healing garden. The reason that we're doing the healing garden is that there's quite a bit of research about the benefits of being in nature. Humans are programmed to be outside, the green, the nature, the nature sounds are very calming. And so again, another opportunity for our participants to enjoy the healing garden with or without the labyrinth when they are at the center. A labyrinth, if you're not familiar with it, is an ancient healing tool. In um, a Labyrinths have been found in archeological digs dating as back as 4,000 years. They've been found in Europe, Middle East, parts of Asia, Native Americans used labyrinths. Almost every culture used some form of labyrinth. There are various styles of labyrinths. I will show you ours. Um, ours is a very circular path. Um, some are more angular, the Native American ones, some Roman ones tend to be more angular. It's nice to play around and visit different ones and see what you prefer. So there is a worldwide labyrinth locator where you will find ours, coincidentally, at our location in, in Grays Lake where pre-pandemic we were every Tuesday at the Wildwood Presbyterian Church. There is also a lab labyrinth on their grounds and uh, Lake Forest Hospital has one. There are a couple in church grounds in Deerfield and Glencoe. The Garfield Park Conservatory has one. So take a look at the labyrinth locator and you will find lots to explore. The Chart 11 Circuit Labyrinth is what our labyrinth is modeled after. And the um, Cathedral in France, the Chartres Cathedral, is where that style originated. However, there's some thought that likely when during uh, the 13th century is when most cathedrals in particularly France and Italy and Europe started to put labyrinths in their floors of their church, there's some thought that they probably found those in the land um, where they're near where their cathedral was built. So this 11th circuit labyrinth in the Chartres Cathedral built in the 13th century, and then labyrinths kind of went out of use, out of popularity during the Renaissance. So when they started to become popular again in the late 20th century, this one was discovered covered with chairs. Now it is open at certain times of the year for walking. Our Cancer Wellness Center Labyrinth, which you see here, which just opened last fall, is actually a modified seven circuit labyrinth. So it's a modified chart style labyrinth. A labyrinth is not a maze. It is a single, a single circuitous path that winds its way into a center. And then that same path becomes the exit. Um, because the path is in full view, there are no decisions to be made when you are walking a labyrinth, unlike a maze, which is a puzzle and you have to use your brain, use your left brain to figure it out so that you don't get lost in the, in the maze. But in a labyrinth, the path is always in full view. There are no decisions to be made about the direction to take. So your mind is able to relax and it allows you time for reflection. When your left analytical brain is quiet because it doesn't have to make decisions in the labyrinth, then your right creative intuitive brain becomes more active. So reasons to walk a labyrinth. Most simply, a labyrinth is a walking meditation. People, some people find it difficult to sit still and, med and meditate. So those people might prefer things like yoga, Tai Chi, or a walking meditation. So 
the labyrinth walking meditation is a place where people are often able to find peace and calm, particularly if they struggle with a sitting meditation. Some people might come to walk a labyrinth with a particular question or a specific intention. Others walk simply to slow down and take time out of their busy life. Some might be in search of clarity, calm, peace. Some people walk a labyrinth to find strength to take the next step if they're struggling with an important decision. Maybe they're in search of guidance or understanding. And often we can get to our own intuition again when that left brain quiets and the right brain can become more active. Some walk a labyrinth when they're grieving or at a time of loss, others in celebration or a time of gratitude. In any circumstance, when you're walking a labyrinth, again, it quiets your left analytical brain. And then people often find that they experience more intuition, emotion, creativity, calm while they're walking a labyrinth. So most importantly, how to, there's no right or wrong, but I'm gonna give you some suggestions and tips. You might want to sit quietly to reflect before you walk the labyrinth. You might journal during your reflection. You can even take paper on your walk if you want to jot down any thoughts, memories, images that come to mind that you want to remember when you're done with your walk. In addition to a moment of silence or reflection before proceeding into the labyrinth, when you get to the entrance path, you might just stop, take a deep breath, get grounded and centered. Enter without any expectations. Enter with an open mind, an open heart. A good focus for a quiet mind is paying attention to your breath or paying attention to your footsteps. If you're not walking alone, if somebody else is walking the labyrinth, I suggest waiting about a minute after they've entered before you start your walk. Our path at the Cancer Wellness Center is a grass path. So you will see that it's got brick dividers, but the brick is there to divide the path. You walk on the grass. And even though we had it leveled, grass can be a little bit uneven. So if you've got balance issues, stability issues, feel free to walk with a cane or walking sticks if that'll give you a little bit more stability. There are three stages to a labyrinth walk. There's the path inward, the center, and the path out. The path inward might be a time of letting go what's currently on your mind or in your focus. It can feel like a releasing, emptying, quieting your mind. Again, as I mentioned before, you might be paying attention to your breath, paying attention to your footsteps, anything to get you into the moment for your mind to quiet. The center of the labyrinth can literally be considered a place for centering or grounding yourself in the present. When you enter the center, just follow your body wherever it takes you. Our labyrinth has pedals in the center. You might choose to or feel like standing in one or walking from one to another or just staying in the center. Wherever your body takes you, spend as much time in the center as you'd like. Sometimes when people enter the labyrinth with sadness or a grievance, a challenge, they might choose to leave that in the center. If you enter the labyrinth with a question, an intention, or maybe with no expe expectations at all, the center might be a place of receiving a thought, an answer in the form of intuition, an emotion, a sense of peace or calm. And then the journey out can be an opportunity to carry out what you felt that you received in the center or to feel lighter if you left something in the center. Symbolically and sometimes actually, you're taking back into the world that which you received when walking the labyrinth. Perhaps this is an increased sense of calm, creativity, feeling of empowerment, authenticity, your experience will likely be different every time that you walk a labyrinth. As I mentioned before, no right or wrong way, I'm just giving you some suggestions. Use the labyrinth in any way that meets what you need. And again, if you're walking it with others, just be respectful of others who might be walking at the same time. Like life, there will be unexpected turns, there might be interruptions that are unexpected, unexpected company, unexpected noises. It's next to a train and the freight train might come by, but just walk again with an open mind, open heart, consider the meaning of what's going on around you and how you react to what's going on around you. So just paying attention, noticing without judgment. Move through the labyrinth in your own style, at your own natural pace. 
it's okay to pass people who are walking at a slower pace than you'd like to walk. When paths cross in the opposite direction, do whatever feels natural to move around each other. Often people will step to the side to pass someone or step to the side and just stop in the stop and then return to your circuit to continue to your walk when you pass somebody. Attempt again to move the, through the labyrinth without any expectations, just being mindful of what you're feeling, what you're experiencing, what you're noticing during your walk. On your walk out, it might be helpful to notice not only how you're feeling, but if there's been any shift or change from the path in to your path out. And after exiting the labyrinth, it might be helpful to stop again and reflect or journal, pay attention to what you experienced on your journey. Did you relax? Did you experience any particular emotion? Were there any metaphors for your life? Did any words, images, memories, people come to you? However strong or weak, any insight, any experience, maybe consider writing it down so that you remember that, just as again, a form of journaling and reflection. Generally, it takes about 20 minutes to walk our labyrinth, but again, people go at different paces, spend different amount of time in the center. So I'm just giving you a little bit of sense of how much time to give yourself. If you feel done and just want to walk straight out and not follow the path out, you can certainly do that too, no right or wrong. So the center's labyrinth and eventually our healing garden will be open not only to Cancer Wellness Center participants, but to the public and always open. Um, there will be some upcoming community walks that we invite you to come and join, walk, join other people to walk in community. And I encourage you to walk sometimes on your own. It's a different experience and you might um, enjoy one more than the other. Thank you. We look forward to welcoming you to our labyrinth.